As we can see, Elon is very certain, and we believe in him, that one day he will accomplish his ultimate goal of colonizing Mars. With that said, right here in this video, I'm going to share with you the 5 steps of how NASA and SpaceX will build the first moon base. So be sure to stay tuned until the end to not miss anything about it. Welcome to the Elon Musk era. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our upcoming videos about Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, and more. In the next decade, SpaceX will land humans on the moon. Even though we have already accomplished this feat before, it'll be the first time in a long time. And that's still something genuinely impressive. In the meantime, Elon Musk recently replied to the tweet of someone who said that he gets sad once a week because he wasn't alive during the moon landing, which is also probably true for most millennials. Then, Elon responded, you will be in the future. And I believe that this is an optimistic response, which is exactly what we need right now. There is a plan for going back to the moon. And even though it may not be the best plan, and the plans may always be under revision, it might also be somewhat behind schedule, but little by little, this plan is beginning to take shape. Moreover, NASA and SpaceX are going to work closely together to make this happen. And just like the first time mankind set foot on the moon, this will change the course of history. Now let me give you more details. First, let's speak about NASA. Because their 21st century moon rocket is finally becoming a reality. Also known as SLS, or Space Launch System, this system hosts manned space launches. The SLS rocket is without a doubt the most powerful rocket NASA has ever created, and its job will be to orbit the Orion spacecraft, the first crew transport vehicle NASA has built since the shuttle. At least the crew section of it is an American design, while the service module of the Orion comes from Europe. In the future, Artemis will use the two machines to transport people to the moon, or at the very least, pretty close to the moon. Perhaps not all the way there, but we'll get to that later. Despite being in development since 2011, the SLS is just now being placed on the launch pad for the very first time. Then, NASA has planned on transporting the SLS from its construction bay to the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39B, which began last March 17th. They will model the rocket and conduct a system check and wet rehearsal. As long as the rocket is ready just seconds before engine ignition, this test should take about a month to complete. In the next month, the SLS will undergo another month of fine-tuning in the assembly building. Once that is done, it can be transferred back to the launch pad and Artemis 1 is ready to launch, and it is expected to launch somewhere between May and July. A comprehensive test will be conducted for the SLS and Orion, since they'll be going to the moon on the first flight of their program, called Artemis 1. To meet the time deadline, the uncrewed flight will orbit the moon completely, which isn't unusual, but NASA had limited options. Launch testing of SLS should have started in 2016, and at least one dummy payload should have been launched into orbit before strapping Orion on top of it and launching it to the moon. Nevertheless, NASA seems to have complete faith in the SLS after 11 years of building it. We'll see. Meanwhile, we can say that the majority of rockets fail on their first launch. As a result, we're likely to see a show this summer depending on whether Artemis 1 is successful. If so, Artemis 2 will be out next year or the following. In 2024, it's safe to say that this will be a crude flight and the pace of action will most likely slow even more than it already does. Then, there will be no difference between this mission and the first one. This time around, people will be inside Orion. They are launched to orbit around the moon by the SLS and then splash down in the ocean. Next, we get to Artemis 3. It's the big show that lands people on the moon. The original target date was 2024, but as we now know, this is a long shot. So currently, NASA is still claiming that it'll happen in 2025 but realistic expectations point to this happening closer to 2028. To make this one work perfectly, a lot of moving parts from various places need to be coordinated. Consequently, the third Artemis flight will look a lot like the second. This time, the SLS launches the Orion spacecraft that takes people into orbit around the moon. Unfortunately, Orion cannot land on the moon. It was just not intended to do that, which seems a bit odd. But there's no need to fret, because NASA has recently added another spaceship into the mix, and that's where SpaceX comes in. As a result, NASA needs a lander, so the plan is to relocate two of the four members of the Artemis 3 crew from Orion to the human landing system that will await them in lunar orbit. 
Once that lander lands on the surface of the moon, the astronaut will hang out there for a few days before making their way back to orbit where they will swap back to Orion and make their way home triumphantly. Originally, a fancy space station called the Gateway was supposed to await them in lunar orbit so they could transfer between two vehicles. And those two members of the Artemis crew who don't get to walk on the moon will be provided with a place to unwind. Nevertheless, NASA has acknowledged that Gateway won't be ready for Artemis 3, and they likely won't finish it until the 2030s. However, NASA has made a smart decision to offload responsibility for building the HLS vehicle to a private company. Then, NASA held a design contest in which many companies participated, and SpaceX won. Despite losing, Jeff Bezos managed to distract the process further with a lawsuit against everyone involved. With this, last fall of 2021, the HLS Starship from SpaceX confirmed the moon landing. Since 2019, SpaceX has been building and testing the Starship. Using a reusable super heavy lift rocket, humans can land not just on Earth, but also on the moon and Mars with the upper stage. Due to its size and power, the Starship is the biggest aircraft ever constructed when added to its super heavy booster. Moreover, SpaceX has already reached the stage of fully assembling this beast during the development phase. Having built, tested, and exploded prototypes of the Starship in suborbital launches for about a year, SpaceX is now ready to launch the Starship into orbit for the first time. Yet they cannot do that until they get approval from the FAA to conduct an orbital launch from the Starbase test facility in Boca Chica, Texas. A good thing is that SpaceX has already received all the environmental approval it needs to begin its Starship program in February 22 at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, where Musk said SpaceX has its entire Starship program. Further, we know that Starship will be launched into orbit this year, and Elon has previously stated he will pack everything up and move it to their pre-approved launch facility in Florida if need be. Thus, the time has come. It's inevitable that Artemis 1 will be released around the same time. Therefore, we should see some pretty incredible rocket launches and space missions this summer. As part of SpaceX's plans, this ship will carry out one or two orbital tests, where the booster and ship would be possibly destroyed in the process. After the kinks are worked out, the Starship will begin sending the satellites into orbit on a regular schedule and attempting to land and reuse both the ship and the boosters. It is projected that SpaceX will test its orbital refueling technique by the end of next year, which uses a tanker ship to replenish Starship's liquid oxygen and methane tanks on extended flights to the moon. When all goes well, we will have a lunarized version of the Starship. And compared to what we see at Starbase, this will be a very different design. In the present orbital spacecraft, satellites will be delivered into Earth's orbit and then landed back on the surface. Usually, this happens via a giant robot catching the satellite. Let's see how that works out. Therefore, the top half of the current ship consists of an empty cargo bay that will have to be changed for HLS. The HLS Starship will require a pressurized compartment for the crew with a life support system. They will be staying in the hotel for several days, so they should feel comfortable. Recently, Elon Musk claimed that SpaceX can now use its Crew Dragon Starship's life support systems to sustain astronauts while on board. And it's the part of the ship at the top, and there will probably be a hatch on the rocket's nose. There will also be a cargo bay, which will house their research equipment and maybe even a rover for them to drive around the moon? Is it made by Tesla? A lunar Cybertruck? Unlikely, but you never know. For the cargo section to reach the moon's surface, it will also have to have an elevator lift. Approximately halfway up the vehicle, there will be an access door for the cargo section as the Starship is 50 meters tall. To power the ship's flight to the moon, the ship's bottom half will contain oxygen and methane tanks. The lunar starship will have additional thrusters on the side that will slow down the descent to the surface of the moon, as opposed to the current starship which uses the Raptor engines for landing on Earth. It'll be much simpler and less dramatic to land on the moon than to perform a kamikaze jump and a last second engine burn on a starship returning to Earth, and that is another significant difference. And because the HLS never returns to Earth, there is no need for a heat shield Afterwards, the HLS will likely just return to the moon one last time and remain there after playing its part in Artemis 3. And on the moon will be a huge steel structure. Then, it can serve a purpose in the future, such as turning it over, covering it with dust and rocks, and using it as a rough base of operations to carry out missions in the future. There is some question about what the future missions will be, but NASA's rough plans currently include Artemis 5, which will also involve a human landing. 
Meanwhile, the purpose of Artemis 4 will be to build the Lunar Gateway Station orbiting the Moon, rather than landing on the Moon. During the mission, the Habitat Module, or IHAB, will be delivered by the European Space Agency and the Japanese Space Agency, JAXA. Assuming we consider 2028 for Artemis 3, and then 2030 for Artemis 4. Thus, in the mid-2030s, Artemis 5 is when we will see increased human activity on and around the moon. The gateway station, as well as the human landing system, will be available at this point. At that point, we will have established ourselves permanently on the moon. There you go. That's NASA's and SpaceX's current plan to get people back to the moon. This means that things are getting moved forward. In addition to SLS and Orion, Starship is very close to its first mission to Earth orbit, though it'll take a few years for both systems to come together and do something quite spectacular. Like putting people on the moon, this is something we can look forward to, something we can have optimism about. And at this point, I think we could be more optimistic. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and thank you for watching. If you would like to receive updates on Elon Musk and his companies, make sure you click the subscribe and bell button.